Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I will be discussing with you return loss and antenna sweeps. I will be showing you shortly how to configure your SiteMaster and Ritsu S331P to do your antenna sweeps. But first, I'm going to start explaining the theory behind return loss and what does an antenna sweep mean. So, what is return loss? It's the ratio of RF signal arriving at an antenna input port that are rejected as a, rate, as a ratio against those that are accepted. It is measured in dB. So basically you're sending a signal down the line. It's coming across all the, uh, the ports and connectors. And once it sits an antenna, whatever is reflected back is added and the, the, the signal is given in ratio with respect with whatever is transmitted or emitted by the antenna. In other words, a proportion of the radio waves will be reflected down the transmission line from the antenna input connection. The importance of return loss measurement, or some people call it antenna sweep. Return loss measurements show the user the match of the system and if it conforms to system engineering specific. So basically, if problem shows up during this test, there is a very good likelihood that the system has problems that will affect the end user. A poorly matched antenna will reflect costly RF energy, which will, which will not be available for transmission. This extra energy return will not only distort the signal, but it will also affect the efficiency of the transmitted power and the corresponding coverage area. When to perform the antenna sweeps? It is a common practice to sweep the antennas on ground before being hoisted. If it sweeps good, then you hoist the antenna and sweep again. Any imperfections indicate an issue in the feed line or connectors. Imagine hoisting the antenna without sweeping, and then you sweep it at the top, and then you have problems. You wouldn't be able to tell if the problems are from the feed lines, connectors, or the antenna itself. That's why when you sweep it on ground, and then you hoist it, if there are any imperfections, you can rule out the antenna and focus on the feeder and the connectors. Last, uh, there are certain acceptable values. So it all depends on what is acceptable to the vendor, to the designer, to the engineer on site in terms of antenna efficiency. Usually, uh, a common standard or a threshold value is used in the industry is 14 to 15 dB. They use that line as the minimum threshold or acceptable value. Remember, the lower the value, the higher the reflection. And the next slide, we're going to look at some table values for that. So here's a return loss values table, just to give you an idea about the return loss value, what, what it means actually. So if you have a zero dB return loss, that basically means 100% of your signal is being reflected. And if you have three dB, that's 50% off. So 15 dB would mean you're, you're okay to deal with 3% being reflected and 97% being transmitted or emitted by the antenna. Now, given all of this information, now we know what's return loss or antenna sweeps. Let's look on how we can configure the Enritsu S331P SiteMaster to, to set our markers and get it ready for antenna sweeping. After covering the basics and theory behind the return loss and antenna sweeps, now I'm going to show you how to set up your Enritsu equipment for testing uh, the return loss. So when you order the software, you can get the software from Enritsu for free, the S331P. And then you can order the equipment. It comes with the USB Site Master. You need this to plug it in to activate your software. It comes with the adapter uh, set. The Enritsu Masters come with an N female, this comes with an adapter set with 716 then female and male and N male to female and female to male. Also it comes with a calibration kit which is important for calibrating uh, your tool, certain frequencies when you want to sweep the antenna, three ports. And finally, you may not need this but it also comes with the armor uh, uh, solid grip for connecting to the Enritsu side to test to sweep the antennas. All right, uh, make sure your US, USB site master is connected to your laptop. I have the software version. 
and double click on it when the usb cable is connected it doesn't give you a, an error i should initiate properly the software is an exact copy of the hardware if you have the sitemaster s331p device it's exactly the same all right once the software opens up uh, there is a certain methodology I like to follow when uh, setting up uh, my markers and preparing the tool for antenna sweeping. Uh, if you can see on the top of the screen, it says uh, port ready cal on. That means calibration is on. Uh, however, I'm going to recalibrate shortly to show you how it works. You can see that the frequencies down there is between 0 0.5 megahertz and 4,000 megahertz or 4 gigahertz. So basically what you need to do is you need to know what's the antenna that you're going to sweep, what's the frequency range, and you only try to calibrate or sweep in the bandwidth that you're looking to operate in. So let's take, for example, we have an antenna that ranges from 100 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. However, I know my application is, is between 216 megahertz and 225 megahertz. The first step is I'll come to the frequency and try to set up my frequency. The start frequency, as I said, between 216 megahertz, click enter so that it goes away. And the end frequency is 225 megahertz is chosen here. Press enter and you're good. The second the second thing I would go for would be the amplitude. I would like to set up my screen. Now, as you can see at the bottom, 216 to 225, that's the bandwidth I'm interested in. I need to set up my top of the screen to the bottom. Normally, the minimum, the least value is zero. Should be zero, zero dB. Press enter. Bottom should be 60. That's the maximum value. Basically, 60 dB means everything you transmit is emitted, no reflections, which is pretty impossible to achieve. The next thing to set up would be the markers. I will start with marker one. Uh, normally, following and written recommendations, you set up your start frequency. Press enter. Second marker would be the end frequency. Press enter. Now for the third marker, you usually look at all your transmitter frequencies and you take the average. In my case, it's uh, 217.25, press enter. Go back. Marker four would be take the average of all my receiver frequencies. That would be 219.25. Press enter. Next, I would like to set up my limit line. It can be an icon in this column or on the right, it doesn't matter. As we discussed earlier, 14 or 15 dB is the minimum threshold. So now we have everything set up and we're ready to sweep except for one step. Once you set up everything for the first time, you need to calibrate. And I will be showing you in the next video how to calibrate. Before we jump in and show you how to calibrate uh, your Anritsu, let's discuss a little bit why do we need calibration and what is calibration? So th the reason we need calibration is to define the perfect limits, which are the best and the worst case scenarios for the device in order to identify anything in between. So basically you're telling your Anritsu, this is the best you can achieve and this is the worst you can achieve and whatever you're gonna measure is gonna be in between. So we use an open, short, and load standard. Open stands for whatever you transmit, all the signal is being transmitted. Nothing is being reflected. That's the best, best you can achieve. The, sh the short means whatever signal you're transmitting, 
is 100% being reflected and nothing is being transmitted. And finally, the load, which is a 50 ohm load that, that kind of replicates your antenna and whatever sig signal you send in, it's 100% being absorbed by the load. And that real life antenna is not 100%. There will be something that's reflected. So these are the limits, upper and lower limits for perfection. And it will tell your analyst too that whatever you plug in an antenna to sweep is going to have values between the minimum and the maximum. Now let's jump to the Android 2 and show you how to calibrate your uh, antenna. To calibrate, click on calibration here and the system will guide you what you exactly need to do. So we start calibration. The first thing you need to do is to plug in the open port on your adapter or connector to your uh, USB site master and click measure. Make sure you tighten it properly. Click measure. Displays a beep. Then you move on to the next port, which is short. Once it's tightened and you're ready, you click measure. Displays another beep. Now you're ready to connect the load. Once you're ready, click measure. A third beep. And finally, click apply. Now that we have set up our Enritsu and calibrated uh, the device, we're ready to sweep an antenna. All you have to do is plug in the end female with the end of an antenna, uh, receiver side or transmitter side, uh, using one of the adapters provided by the adapter kit, and you should be good to go. Uh, I will show you in the next slide uh, an antenna swept and go over it quickly. Finally, I'd like to share with you an antenna sweep I did myself at a site, show you how it looks like in real life, something similar to this. You should focus on marker three and marker four, which are the average transmit result, uh, the average transmit frequency and the average receive frequency. You can see that the return loss on marker three is 34.11 dB, which is an excellent result, and marker four is 22.11 dB, which is also a very good result. Notice that this is my limit line at 14 or 15 dB, and we're in pretty good shape. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to share, like, and comment below, and thank you for watching.